Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and we're going to look at question 7 from the higher level junior cycle sample exam paper 2021. This is a question that involves sets with Venn diagrams. It's a nice question and probably one of the easiest on the paper. So let's get right into the video. So we'll start with obviously part A and we're told that A, B and C are sets and we have to shade in uh, each of the given sets in the Venn diagrams on the tables below. So the first set we're given is A union B and essentially what the union means there is just everything that's in A or B. So it can be in either A or B, it can be in both, but just once it's in uh, either A or B, then we can, you know, count it in the set. So to shade both of those and we'll just be shading in the circle A and the circle B. And we knock obviously not the circle C, but there's going to be an overlap. So we will shade in the overlap, but not the part of the circle C that's just in C. So there we go. As I said, we are going to shade in the overlap with C, but not the part of the circle C that's just uh, in C without the overlap, as um, that's not going to be included in A or B. So and now let's move on to the second set, which is A slash B intersect C. So the slash just means everything in A that isn't in B intersect C and intersect is everything that's in B and C. So it has to be in both of them. So uh, the overlap essentially. So the overlap with B and C. So it's everything that's uh, in A that isn't in that overlap. So the overlap with B and C, I'm just gonna mark, I'm not gonna shade it in, I'm just gonna mark it out to show you. This is the overlap with B and C or the intersect. So it's everything in A that isn't in that yellow area there. So we're gonna be shading in uh, the rest of the circle A but without that little part there that I've you know circled in yellow. Now I, don't think you should do this in the actual exam as uh, it may confuse the examiner. I was just I was just doing it here to show you uh, what B intersect C is. So now I'm going to actually shade in the part of the circle A that is in A that isn't in B intersect C. So uh, there we have it. So it's most of the circle A, but as I said, not the part that's in uh, B intersect C, which I marked out with the yellow outline at the uh, at the start of me doing the question. So uh, that's part A of the question. Uh, straightforward enough. And now we're going to move on to part B. So part B tells us that P and Q are two other sets and that P is some subset of Q. So a subset is just, it's a set of numbers or a set of elements that are in some larger set. So basically everything in P will also be in Q as it's a subset of it. So part one of the question asks us to write an X in the region of the Venn diagram below, which must contain no elements. So we know that everything in P is also in Q, which means that there'll be nothing in this area here as there'll be nothing that's just in P. Anything in P will also be in Q, so it'll be in the in the overlap, in the intersection, uh, in the middle there, in that yellow overlap there. So um, there's going to be nothing that's just in P. So that's why I've marked that with the X, which is what the question wanted us to do. So now let's move on to part two of the question. So it's asking us to put a tick in the correct box to show which statement has to be true. And obviously only one of these boxes are correct. And we also have to uh, explain or answer. So the hashtag symbol there, so obviously we would know it as the hashtag symbol. So it basically just means the amount of elements in that set. So hashtag P is the amount of elements in P and the same goes for the amount of elements in Q. So the first statement there is that the number of elements in P is smaller than or the same as the number of elements in Q. Uh, the second one is the number of elements in P must be um, the same as the elements in Q. And the last one is that the number of elements in P must be greater than or the same as the number of elements in Q. So we're going to go through them. So um, the first one there, the number of elements in P is smaller than or the same as the number of elements in Q. Now, we know this must be correct as we know that P cannot be greater than Q. So that rules out the last statement as uh, anything in P is also in Q. So it can't be greater than it. So everything, you know, everything in P will also be in Q, which, you know, contradicts the last statement, which says that uh, the amount of elements in P will be greater than or the same as the amount of elements in Q. That can't be true. It, it can be equal to it, but it can't be greater than it. So that means that we have to rule out the last statement. The second statement can be true if there was just elements in the overlap in the yellow area that I marked out, but it's it's not. It says, it says which statement must be true. And the second statement there, it doesn't have to be true all the time. So that's why we're not going to do that one. But the last statement um, will always be true as the number of elements in P will be smaller than or the same as the number of elements in Q. So it's definitely not greater than it, but it can be smaller than it or it can be equal to it. So therefore, it's the first statement there. And our explanation is that as P contains no elements and is a subset of Q, it cannot be greater than Q. The number of elements in P do not have to equal the number of elements in Q. So that just leaves us with the first statement then. 
P may equal Q, but it is not certain. So that just leaves us then with the first statement that P is either smaller than or equal to Q. So that's our answer for B part two of the question, the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.